Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. It is a beautiful summer day here in Pennsylvania and I figured I'd come outside and talk about my favorite foam target, which in this case is the big Morel High Roller. So I absolutely loved the original Morel High Roller 21 target, which was a little bit smaller version of this one. In particular, it was actually three inches smaller. So you see, I have outlined the original 13 inch target. Now this one is 16 inches, still in the cube form. They've rounded off the corners. We still have a really nice handle. And of course you can still shoot at all six sides. But my favorite thing about this target because of its side is now we've increased the width. And so let's talk about why I like this target so much more even than the original, but still love it for a lot of the other proprietary reasons, in particular the foam. Okay, I need to put this down before I drop it. This sucker's big. All right, so before we dive into why I particularly love like this target for its size, not for the face and actually how much air you have to shoot at. It actually refers to the depth. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's talk about the target specifications. You're talking 16 inches on, on each face, and of course you have all the dots from six down to one that you can shoot at. You can also shoot at the red spots, make your own, put paper or tape X's onto it, put sticky dots, whatever you wanna do with the target. The whole thing is shootable, and that's really nice. That's kind of one of the biggest stickers with bag targets, 3D targets, and other foam style targets on the market you can only shoot at the front and the back and there's nothing wrong with that but I like to get as much life out of my targets and particularly foam targets as I can and both the original morale and now this one really offer that the target is designed to stop both field points mechanicals and fixed blade broadheads of any size and of any weight and I can personally test that in particular with the original one which I shot broadheads in all throughout the fall now the self-healing foam is true it is a self-healing foam just just like a 3D target. And that's what this target is most like, a 3D target. You don't get all the little bits and pieces of foam like you do out of a bag target or out of other types of block targets until you start shooting broadheads in it. And then no target is safe. And you can't shoot broadheads into a bag target anyway. Now, unfortunately, I don't have my original Morel target. I put thousands and thousands of arrows into that thing and absolutely pulverized it. And of course, the broadheads getting into it, I was starting to cut out pieces of foam, just like if you were to shoot a 3D target with a broadhead. Now, speaking of 3D targets. This is my favorite thing and favorite aspect about the Morel High Roller and now the Big High Roller in particular because it's a lot larger. I have a lot more surface area to shoot at. When you shoot at a foam style 3D target, whether it be a McKenzie or it be a Reinhardt, the whole entire target is made of that foam. The entire insert, rather, is meant to be shot at. And But the problem being is that the manufacturer of the target knows that right in those scoring rings or right behind the shoulder there where people want to shoot at the animal for either points or for practice for bow hunting, that's the spot that's going to get all the arrows. And if you go to your local range and they hold 3D shoots and they bring out the old targets, you'll see that there'll be this nice dark pieces of foam are missing but right behind the shoulder or right in that 11 or 12 ring. So even though that entire insert is foam, manufacturers know they need to build the whole insert to be able to withstand the pressure that's going to be put on just the scoring rings. And that's what the Morel Big High Roller is doing. The entire thing is like a giant insert on a 3D animal. Except unlike that 3D animal where you're aiming at scoring rings or you're aiming right behind the shoulder, the whole target you can shoot at. And so it doesn't matter which side or which spot you shoot at, the whole thing can receive pressure and can receive thousands and thousands of shots before it ever wears out and becomes useless for you. And of course, unlike a 3D target, which you can only shoot broadside from the left side or the right, you can roll this dice around to all six sides, get hundreds of arrows into one particular spot before you ever wear it out and need to shoot at a different one. Now, another big hit with the big high roller and the original high roller is the feet per second rating of this target. It's really common nowadays to see crossbows in particular get well over 400 feet a second IBO speed, and that is insane. The original 13-inch uh, Morel target was up to 450 feet a second, and the big one is up to 500 feet per second, which is insane. And there are some crossbows, particularly made by 10 point, that are getting well into the 450s and up in terms of feet per second, and we need a target that's able to withstand that. Now, not only can this target withstand it, even though it's large, it's still lightweight enough that you can take this into the woods with you, throw it into the bed of your truck, and use it as your discharge target if you have an unsuccessful hunt. You can just take this right out of the back seat of your car like I did, or right out of the bed of your truck, 
throw it onto the ground, discharge your arrow, and it's safe for broadhead. So if you don't have a discharge bolt with you, you can still shoot your broadhead into here, pull it out, throw everything into the truck, and drive home. So here's my favorite thing about the upgrade in size to this target. With the original target, we only had 13 inches of depth, which is totally fine. It worked for thousands of arrows. But for me, shooting a little bit higher poundage, 60 pounds, 31 inch draw length, and I'm pushing some heavy arrows, sometimes 550 to 600 grains. And even with just a nice bullet style field point, instead of like a, a more piercing style field point, that bullet style gets less penetration, which is nice. And I strongly recommend you use that with every target, but in particularly any type of foam target, because it's going to increase the life. But anyway, back to what I'm talking about with the depth. When I'm shooting that long 31 inch heavy arrow, long draw length and higher poundage, I'm getting a lot of penetration. And on the original target, I only had six and a half inches until I got to center. Now, when I get past center, I'm now encroaching, if you will, on the other half of the target, right? So let's say I'm shooting at this number four side right here. I have six and a half inches of depth on the original target. If I punched through that, I'm now eating into the material on the other side. Now, I'm not getting a pass through. It's not dangerous for the target whatsoever, but that means the other side that I could be shooting at, in this case, the number three side, I'm now losing stopping power on this side internally, inside the target. But with 16 inches, I can only penetrate up to maybe eight, nine, and I'm saving that other half of the target. So I can weaken this side, if you will, by shooting hundreds and thousands of shots over here, and this side is still good. I still will have eight inches of foam, which is more than enough in order to stop hundreds on this side, and I can do that with all six sides. Now, eventually, you'll start getting some crossovers, and you'll start penetrating more than eight or nine inches, but you're gonna get hundreds, if not thousands of shots, unless you start shooting broadheads into it, then you're gonna be opening up some gaps. But you're still getting hundreds of thousands of shots into one target just by increasing it by those three inches. Now, even though it's not a particular problem for me, because I don't find myself shooting at longer distances, those people that did see the original target that 13 inches, they sometimes looked at it and thought, gosh, that's a little bit small. And particularly if you started shooting at the five side, which meant you had less space on the edges to shoot at these dots or on the six uh, sided side of the die, which they're closer to the edge as well. And people are like, man, I might miss. Maybe that's not the target for me. Well, of course, adding that three inches doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you compare it to the original side and you put that extra inch and a half on either side, it really opens up the face and really allows you to feel comfortable shooting at longer distances of 50, 60, and 70. Yards. As a final added bonus, because of the larger size, I can now stick a three spot or a five spot target onto here a lot more comfortably than the original target. I'll put a link to my original video down in the description below. I had to cut out the individual 40 centimeter Vegas faces and then tack them on to the smaller target, the 13 inch model. This one being 16 inches, I have that extra leeway. I don't have to cut out all three and I can fit three sides onto here to shoot during the winter time. So that's my first thought and impressions on the Morel Big High Roller 21. If you have any further questions about the target or any other archery target that I didn't address, follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, my email's even down there, and of course, always leave a comment here on YouTube. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose, definitely enjoy God's beautiful sunshiny creation, and we'll get to see you next time.